What's going on you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch. We're back at it again with another project video. When I first saw this project come out, I was super psyched to try it, but I didn't have a 3D printer and then parts weren't available. Raspberry Pi Zeros have only just recently come back into stock. So there's really no better time than now to give this one a shot. So today's project is gonna be the Simpsons TV. It's gonna be a little tiny TV that's gonna play Simpsons videos on a loop forever. Just plug it in and it goes. Now in the process, I'm going to teach you how to set up a Raspberry Pi, including flashing everything to the SD card, getting that going, um, installing video players, kind of just going through a whole bunch of cool stuff. And then we get to do hardware. We can solder things together. So I think it's going to be a really fun project. Break out that soldering iron, hot glue gun, and SD card reader. This is going to be a fun project. Let's make something cool. All right, so we're gonna start off by setting up our Raspberry Pi Zero, but first, let me show you all the parts we're gonna need for this project. All right, so the first thing we've got is our Raspberry Pi Zero right here. And I already soldered the headers on. Just be careful when you're soldering them on that they're nice and straight. If they're not, you can see they're not perfect on here. The screen's gonna set a little crooked. For this project, it won't really matter. We've got our Rabbit Labs SD card little guy right here. It's so hard to remember where the middle is. Already got paint on my fingers from painting the thing. But yeah, SD card, no problem. We've got our speaker. This is a uh, 1.5 inch 4 ohm 3 watt audio speaker. It's gonna be running mono, but yeah, jam out. We've got a micro USB, little solder plug. It's really hard to see, but yeah, it's micro USB. Then we've got the opposite of that. Basically, we're gonna be making ourselves a USB cable. So pretty cool there. We have a 1K trim potentiometer. This little guy is gonna be used for the volume knob. We've got a Adafruit. This is a 2.5 watt mono adapter that'll convert any stereo signals to model. Mono for that matter. And that brings us to our screen, which is a WaveShare 2.8 inch screen. It's an IPS uh, touch screen, which we're not using, but it's 480 by 640 resolution. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Big old spool of wire, shebang. And of course we've got our 3D printed case. Speaking of 3D printing, that brings us to today's sponsor, PCBWay. Now, not everybody's got a 3D printer and sometimes it's just not convenient to 3D print things. Like right now, it's like 90 some degrees outside and this studio gets hot. Also, sometimes you just need to make sure something's gonna get printed perfectly the first time. Well, PCBWay has got you covered. They even offer metal 3D printing and an assortment of materials. So check out the link down in the description to get yourself an instant quote. Thanks PCBWay for the support and let's get back at it. So first things first, we're gonna need to uh, prepare our SD card for Raspberry Pi, plug it into our card reader, and we're gonna pop over to desktop and I'll show you how this process works. All right, now that we're in the desktop, all we have to do is go to the Raspberry Pi website and download their imager. Um, I'm on Windows, so we're gonna download it for Windows and just install that. Obviously, I've already done this, so I don't need to do it again. We're also gonna need an operating system, so we're gonna use a older version of Raspberry Pi OS, it's called Buster Lite. So we can go over to here and we're just going to download the um, Raspbian Buster Lite zip. Save this to our desktop. All right, now that we have our image, we can open up the Raspberry Pi imager. Click yes here. And then we're going to choose operating system and then we're going to go down to use custom. And right on the desktop, we're going to grab Buster Lights. Then just click on choose storage. It's going to automatically pick your SD card. Um, just be careful. If you have like a USB mass storage device plugged in, you can accidentally overwrite it. Cool. We've got that. Click the right button. Click yes to continue. And we're just going to wait. This does take a while. And we're done. And you know it's done because it pops up and says, please format disk. Obviously, you're gonna hit cancel at this point for sure. And you can remove, click continue. All right, we can go ahead and close this. Then what we're gonna do is actually open Notepad and paste this in from the tutorial that we're following. This is a file that's gonna basically let the uh, Raspberry Pi know what our login credentials are. So make sure everything's spelled exactly correctly. Spacing is very important. And then we're gonna go file save as and we're going to name this file wpa underscore supplicant dot config c-o-n-f we'll drop it on our desktop because that's where we're working right now and save and that should create our file so we can close that 
we'll open up our SD card. It's gonna have a folder called boot on it. And we can just drop this directly into our boot folder. We also need to create a new file. We're gonna just do a new, we can make it a text document for the moment, but it's gonna be called SSH and nothing else after it. It's just a file called SSH. Windows is gonna be very confused, but it's perfectly fine. Now we are following the actual DIY Simpsons build. Whoops, there we go, I got lost for a second. Um, we're following the uh, tutorial right here and it gives us a display driver. So we're gonna download the driver right here. This is the WaveShare driver. Do, 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 desktop, save that here. And we're simply gonna unzip that file and then drop it into the overlays folder. So here's our file. Extract all, extract. And then right in the overlays folder of the SD card, we're just gonna drop these files. Don't drop the folder, drop the files. We can close this. And then if we open back up, close this tab, our tutorial, it wants us to add these lines to the bottom of config.txt, which we can do. Go back to the boot here. Here's config.txt. There we go. Bottom line, space, there we go. And save. With that saved, we can close this now. And then we're just going to eject our SD card to safely remove. Let's hop on over to the overhead camera and I will show you plugging it in. Okay, now that we're back over here, we can take our SD card, make sure you plug it into the uh, Raspberry Pi, super important. And then I'm gonna struggle plugging the screen in. It's always a little complicated. Well, not complicated, it's very easy. It's just hard to do. And um, unless your pins are perfectly, perfectly lined up. Uh, since I've already plugged this in once, it should be a little bit easier. But yeah, it's always a little bit hard to get them lined up. So I have a feeling I'm gonna fast forward through this. Yeah, there we go. Takes a second, but we got it. Now we need to plug this in. And if anybody's watched the Ponegachi videos, you know that this has two, not one, but two USB, micro USB ports. We're gonna plug into the centermost one. That's gonna be the data port. This one over here is just for power. And this is a mini HDMI. So let's plug this in. And with any luck, this will power up. Plug it in. Eh, there we go. And let's give it a second to turn on. So yeah, you'll see this thing kind of whirring away. And if we can focus, here we go. I can just manual focus and you can see what's going on. But yeah, it's just going through and starting all of the operating system stuff. There's some initial setup things in here as well. Um, I've already had to reboot this a couple times to actually get this to focus so you can see what's going on. It'll show you an IP address at some point. So you want to keep an eye out for when that happens because you might need that in this next step. Uh, cross your fingers you don't, but we'll find out. And this should finish doing its thing in just a moment. So now that we have all that set up, we can pop over back to the desktop. We can SSH in and start setting this all up. All right, now that we're back on the desktop, we're gonna open up PowerShell. And then we're going to try to SSH into our Raspberry Pi using this command right here. And awesome. So if this doesn't work right off the bat, use the uh, IP address that shows up on the Raspberry Pi screen. So we're gonna go to yes. All right, and the Raspberry Pi default password is raspberry. Hey, perfect, we're in. Now we're gonna go ahead and change our password here. So this is just uh, sudo raspi-config. And then we're gonna change our password. We're gonna use password for the moment. Password changed successfully. We can get out of here, so just press the side arrow to go to finish. We also want to update our Raspberry Pi, so we can just do sudo apt-get update. We're hooked up to the internet already because we did that configuration file, so we're just going to let this run. A few moments later. Cool, cool. Now that's done. So the way that this tutorial was written up, initially they want you to use a USB mass storage device to transfer files over. However, we're going to use FTP. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how to do this. It's just sudo apt-get install USB mount. That's going to let you mount a USB drive to the Raspberry Pi. So if you do choose to do it that way, you certainly can. And we're done. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is we're going to need to modify a file to enable auto mounting on the Raspberry Pi. So we're just going to use Nano, which is their, uh, their text editor, and we're going to scroll down looking for the private mount equals yes. And we want to change that to no. Private mount equals yes. Go over here. Delete, delete, delete. Go to no. And then control X 
for exit, yes to save, enter gets us out. We're also going to need to install Raspi GPIO. Um, it basically, it's a package that lets the uh, GPIO pins be cur uh, controlled by the Raspberry Pi. So right there is the command for it, and then uh, we'll let that one go. So now that that's all set, we're gonna go ahead and throw a reboot command, and we're just gonna reboot the Raspberry Pi. All right, so I can see on the screen that the Raspberry Pi is already restarted, which means we can reconnect to it. So if we press up a bunch of times here, there we go. Whoop, whoop. Raspberry Pi dot local, and then remember we changed the password, and we should be back in. Boom, boom, back into SSH. The next step we need to do is going to be configure the audio. So we're going to go into here and we're going to use sudo nano boot config. And then we're going to just go ahead and add the following line. Again, I'm just copying and pasting from the tutorial. So get to the bottom. Here's the bottom. I would like to add a space. And in PowerShell, when you're SSH like this, right click is going to be your uh, your paste. So control X to exit Y and we're saved. So that just remapped our audio to pins 18 and 19, but the pin 18 is actually currently being used for the backlight. So we need to reconfigure that. Otherwise our screen just won't turn on. So we're gonna go into here and then we're just gonna go ahead and copy these two lines. And then we're gonna paste that right before the exit command. So right there, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. Control X, Y, enter. All right, so the next step, we're gonna have to change some boot commands. And hey, I had to reshoot this part a couple times because I kept making mistakes. So you can see uh, all my failures on here, but we'll paste this here. Um, go ahead and change this line where console from TTY one to three. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and delete the FSTK repair equals yes. We'll get rid of that. Cool. And then we're gonna add this line console blank, so on and so forth, right to the end here. Put a space, right click, up. And sometimes it wants to do that. It all needs to be on the same line. So there we go, put a space, and then we'll exit. Control X, save yes, and then enter. From here, we just need to install our video player. So we're just gonna app get, and it's OMX player. Let that run for a second. Give it a second. Continue, yes. Well, that took a while, but we're all done. Next step is everybody's favorite. We're going to install Git. So we can just sudo app git install git. Easy, easy. And let that rip. Continue. Yes. All right. All these installations take forever, but we're almost there. So first of all, let's go to CD. We need to get out of this directory slash. And then we're going to git clone the Simpsons TV repository. So now that that's done, this is where he has you plug in a USB storage device to it. We're actually gonna just enable FTP so we can control it that way. I find it's a lot easier. Trying to get a USB storage on a micro USB requires adapters that most people don't have. So I figured this was an easier way to do it. We're gonna be using the same process we did for the Ponegachi. So, so we're gonna sudo su, and then this is the root. So we're gonna change root password, P-A-S, S W D roots and we're going to change the password password and now we have our root password changed we now need to enable FTP support so we can right click here and that's going to load that up and we're going to scroll down until we find the permit root logins do, do, do. there we go we're going to uncomment this line and then change this to yes Excellent. Control X and then save yes, enter. And then from there, all we're going to do is restart the SH SSH service. So service SSH restart. So now we'll open up FileZilla and then remember that FTP, FTP, remember the IP address I told you to remember? We're going to write that down there. Username is root, password is the password, and then port's going to be 22. If any luck, this will connect. Hey, and because I've done this before, it's gonna give me some weird errors. This is always fine, click okay. And we're in. So we can see our root folder and here's our base folder right here. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to, I believe it was the home folder, pi, and then Simpsons TV. This is where our videos are gonna live, right? In this folder. So they recommend using FFMPG or MPEG, FFMPEG, whatever. 
uh, to convert your files over. They just need to be MP4s. I prefer using Handbrake, it's so much easier, but in my case, my files are already encoded properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop one of my completely easily obtained episodes onto the into the FTP. It's going right here and it'll finish up in a second. It takes a bit of time. So if you're going to transfer all of them, which I will do once the project is done, it's going to take a little while. So for now, we're just going to use one video. Well, that took forever. Kind of feels like the old days of uh, downloading files and stuff. But yeah, that's all set. We can now close our FileZilla and go back into PowerShell because we are got one more step to do. So in order to get the buttons to work correctly, we're just going to add those in here. So, whoops, hold on. Copy this guy, paste into here. That's done. Run this. Yeah, copy, paste, and it's going to open this file right here. We'll copy our instructions. Hello. There we go. And then... Do, do control X, yes, and close. Now we just need to set up our player service. So it's just, we're just copying pasting. This is like two thirds of what this whole process is, just copy and pasting. We got another file. We're gonna copy this and paste this in here. Paste that in there, control X, save, cool. From here, we just have to make it so that these two services that we just created will run at boot. So that works there. Copy the next line. Paste that, and cool. We're gonna shut down and see what happens. Paste that, shut down now. All right, cool. So now we can just disconnect this, and then we're gonna, just gonna reconnect it, and hopefully this will boot into our Simpsons episode. So here we go, we're plugged in, and yep, let's see what happens. Hey, it takes a second or two, but there we go. It's playing The Simpsons. So right now we don't have it set up with audio because there's no speakers or anything on it. But now that this is done and this is playing, so freaking cool, we can get on to our hardware projects. All right, so let's make a little room. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention I 3D printed this. I did a really bad job painting this black. Uh, might reprint the front of this, but I used a multicolor silk PLA because that's what I happen to have. But I think it looks kind of cool. It's still kind of purple. It works. So, but yeah, let's make some space and get some stuff soldered together. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up this audio circuit. So let's solder in our output wires here. So let's see. I'm going to go black's going to go into ground and then red's going to go into power. I can actually just kind of poke those. I'm actually just going to go ahead and poke them through the, the holes, which I can't see at all at this angle. But yeah, let's we'll poke them through the holes and then we'll solder them in. Okay, I've got those kind of pinned down right now. Whoops, let's not melt my wires and knock those out. I'm gonna tin this up pretty good. And then just drop a little bit of solder on both of those points. I'll clean that other one up in a second. Whoops, solder stuck. And then we don't need that crossing over here, so we'll just clean those up. There we go. That's one done. Okay, so those are in there. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's gonna work. And now we just need a single wire that's going to go into our audio in. So that's this bottom corner plug right there. There we go. And same idea. Taking our wire, poke it through the hole, and then drop some solder on it. Hold it down with this guy. Whoops, came out. Gotta be careful. Okay, back at it. A little bit more solder. Tin the tip. And just drop that in there. Hold the board in place, and that's it. So one other thing we need to do is actually run a jumper. This is a step I think they forgot in the procedure and they added it later because it doesn't show in any of the videos. But we're going to go to the second hole, the one right above the, solid, the single red. That needs to jump to ground. So let's get that figured out real quick. Okay, so I've got the wire in here, working around all of this stuff in my studio. And get that soldered in. Be real careful because there's a bunch of stuff up here I don't want to get extra solder on. So let's see if we can just get just the bare minimum on here. Should probably just flux this, but whatever. We made it this far. A little bit more. And that's going to be good enough. All right. So we got that guy in right there. And now we just need to bridge that over to ground, which is that guy over here. Make a little loopsy doopsy. And then I am going to just put a little bit. That's a ton. Let's get rid of some of my flux little teeny bit of flux on here it's going to help it reflow all right this will work not the easiest thing in the world to do but it's going to work there we go done and done so now we have it we've got their jumper right there 
that's jumped over and then we have our wires hooking up there now we just got to connect the two on the other side for our power all right this time we got a little bit of flux on both of them for fun grab our soldering iron and we'll pop those both on being careful not to move anything let's tend the tip a little bit oh yeah flux flux is the way to go everybody keeps telling me flux but yes flux is the way to go so that guy's done so now we have our potentiometer, which is right here, which is the little knob that we had earlier. And then so the middle pin right there is going to be our input. And then the right pin here is our output. So I'm just going to go ahead and bend this out of way and we can hook it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder this wire, which is going to be the output to the right leg right there. Grab a little bit of flux, put it on here. Can't hurt. Right, right, right there. Yep. Get in there. And then let's tend the heck out of this guy. Wake up my soldering iron. Got a good amount of solder on there. Get that nice and on my wire. And then let's see if we can get these two to connect well. All right, not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's on. I am to solder on the next wire. So the next wire that's going on is gonna be our red. So we're gonna go right here. Let's get this thing positioned. Let's flux everything again. A little there, a little bit teeny teeny bit on there. Again, tin the tip of our soldering iron with a bunch of solder. Whoops, miss. Here's a bunch. And then red wire right there. Got a bunch of solder on it. And then we're just gonna ever so gently touch them in. And they're connected. Easy peasy. Last thing to do is to wire in our speaker. Both of these black wires are gonna go to the speaker. It doesn't matter where. So again, we'll put these in the hole. Actually, let me twist this up a little bit. Let me twist this up a little bit. There we go. Give it a little fold over. Make sure it doesn't bridge to anything. It should be pretty easy to do. And we'll just go ahead and solder that right on right now. Um, set like this, cool. Flux, solder, and that guy's on. And then grab the other one. Same idea. This one needs to get a little bit more stripped. Easy. Spin this through the hole. Give it a little bend. Come on, get over. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just needs to be on. Cool. A little bit of flux. And then the same thing all over again. Solder. Give it a nice little touch and that should just pop right in there. And we're on. Speaker circuit done. So this is what it looks like. Whoops. So the speaker is hooked up to here, and then we've got the potentiometer, which is going to control our volume. The wires might be a little long, but what are you going to do? Other quick thing to notice is that there is a very, very tiny screw. There we go. Very, very tiny screw in there. We're going to turn this all the way up. So get my screwdriver in there, and then do, 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 do. I think that's turning. Cool. And that should do it. Now that that's done, we're gonna make our own DIY USB extender so we can plug things into the back of the TV. And yeah, that's all we're gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and find our ground and our power and hook those up to this guy. So just as before, we're gonna do ground and our black wire. See if we can poke this through this hole. These ones are tinier. It may be a little tricky. Cool, we've got those on there. Then just flux it up there. Oops, that's a big blob of flux, but you know, whatever. It's just flux, it's not gonna hurt anything. This is chip quick, no, no clean flux, so don't worry that I'm not cleaning it. It's fine, it's not gonna etch anything. I know people get upset with me, but it's gonna be okay, I promise. All right, wake up, and we're on. Little more, little more. Now the other side's gonna be a little finicky because we gotta go to this little these little pads on here but shouldn't be too bad these we're gonna flux the heck out of the wires and the pads because this is again gonna be a little bit more delicate oops dropping my flux there we go get a little bit more on there so i have a little bit less for the pads get the pads a little bit fluxy cool now we're just gonna make sure the orientation on everything's still the same so that goes this way that's right side up, that's right side up. So this is all matching. Otherwise you'll have your, you know, power will be backwards and that would be terrible. You don't want that. So let's see, let's get in here. Get some solder on these wires. Alrighty, a little bit of solder there. And let's see if we can't get this attached. 
being as careful as humanly possible. All right, that guy is on. And this is going to be freaking awkward. Let me put this down for a second. This is going to need to, like, just kind of work. Eh, sit that right like that. And let's see if I have enough solder to actually make this pad melt. Oh, beautiful. Everybody told me to use flux. You guys are legends. So, yeah, soldered on. There we go. Good there. And then we're good here. So, I think we're pretty much ready to go. So now that we've made all these cool things, we are ready to put this onto our Raspberry Pi. So let's put this pad down so I don't scratch anything too badly. And then we're going to solder right directly to here. Now, it's very important to keep an eye on the orientation of everything because we're going to hook up our audio to these three pins down at the bottom here. And then we're going to hook up power up here. But yeah, just you can read the pin outs, but if everything's oriented upside down, you're going to do everything backwards. So just be real careful that you do it forwards. So now we're going to wire up our audio circuit. We need to go to these top two pins. So or not top two, the second two. So that that one right there and then that one down from that. You'll see. And that's going to be where we hook up our audio circuit. So let's again get a little bit of flux going on here. Flux, flux, flux. And then we can attach the two of those. It's going to go red and then black. So these are our paired wires for our audio circuit. And then again, red first, then black. Red and then black. That's a little ugly, but let's fix that up just a little bit more. And black. Perfect. So you can see right there. There we go. And you can see they're soldered onto those points right there. Easy. Now our last wire is going to go into this third pin from the bottom down here. So we'll rotate this around to make it a little bit easier for me to reach stuff. So it's gonna be the third pin from right there. Teeny bit of flux or a lot of flux, whatever. It's all fine. It's all going to the same place. And then ever so gently get in there and melt this on. Let me actually know this will be okay. Actually, let me shorten this one real quick. It's got a little bit too much exposed wire. It's gonna make it a little bit harder to do without bridging anything. So here we go. Hit this up here. And then, yeah, that looks way better. Let's melt that in place. Pull it back a little bit so that we don't short anything. Cool. And that should pretty much do it. Okay, now that we have all of that set up, let's validate our install and make sure everything's working before we glue everything together. So we're gonna plug that in. And I've got this plugged into my data port back here again, because in the future, if I want to add more videos or when I want to add the rest of the videos, um, I can just go ahead and FTP into it again. So yeah, let's give it a minute and see what happens. Hey, and it's working. It's hard to see, but yep. It's playing just like it was before. And now we have audio as well. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear it well. The speaker's got some interference to it. I actually think I might have a bad amp, or the, the mono adapter might be bad, but either way, it's all working, so we know we can put it all together from here. So let's go ahead and unplug this, and we'll start doing the assembly product, or <laughs> the assembly process. So we're gonna swap out our soldering iron for the handy dandy glue gun. You've seen me use this. Well, actually, you haven't seen me use it before, but <laughs> if you've seen any of my early boards, you know I use it. So let's open up our case and take a look at the inside. We have some ports back here and we're gonna get gluing. All right, so some quick messing around. You can see in the back here, it actually has a spot for this card to sit, but mine doesn't sit far enough and the USB port on this, you can't see, doesn't really stick out at all. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna mount it to the other hole so it sits kind of like that so that my USB cable can actually plug in properly and then we'll get some good attachment. So yeah, just gonna go ahead and glue the heck out of this guy. Just be real careful to kind of hold it in place. Okay, after several minutes of filing and jamming stuff in there, I finally got it kind of sitting in there, right? So I'm just gonna literally cover this thing in glue because this needs to be on there pretty darn snug to make sure that when I'm plugging the card in and out, it doesn't come off. So a bunch of glue in that one. So yeah, you can see right there, a bunch of glue should hold that in place. No problem. I'm gonna let that dry. And then keep in mind that this hot glue does get hot enough and the hot glue gun does get hot enough to start melting the PLA. 
So you want to be a little careful about touching it when the glue's hot. Otherwise, you can distort it pretty easily. Like I can see that there's a mark down here already from the glue. I wonder if you can see it. But yeah, you can see if I rotate it, eh, it'll be okay. So I forgot to actually press the record button, but whoop, it's still hot. <laughs> but I got three little dollops of glue on there. That'll hold the speaker in place. We're just waiting for it to dry. This is again, ultra hot glue. So that stuff's super, super hot. And it uh, takes a while to dry, but it, it basically is super sturdy once it's dry. Or dry, <laughs> once it's cool. Also, while that's doing its thing here, we can move that out of the way and put the knobs in. So this is actually set up so that it used to have a power button, but the power buttons were out of stock. So I am actually just gonna take where the power button used to be and then just jam that in and glue it in place. Get it lined up. This might be a little snug. I can poke it with a stick. Cool. It's in there all the way. And now we're just gonna throw a bunch of glue on top of it and that should keep it in place. Don't need a ton because that one's, you know, doesn't move, it doesn't do anything. And we'll just kind of uh, give it like that to keep it out of our way. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually, it's gonna be the volume knob, which goes in here. The volume knob is gonna need to be attached to our volume uh, port or our potentiometer. Now it says it's supposed to clip into here, but I actually had to print these uh, a little bit smaller. So they fit inside the holes of the actual front plate. So I'm gonna just add a dollop of glue and try not to burn myself horribly while I manually attach these two parts, give it plenty of glue. And the beauty of super hot glue like this is that you don't really have to move crazy fast. There we go. That's lined up well. And we'll just let that dry. Again, I keep saying dry, but it's more like solidify because it's melted. Okay, now that seems happy. Does the knob still turn? Knob still turns, it doesn't seem to want to break off immediately, so that's perfect. I got strings of hot glue all over the place, but it's okay. We'll we'll soldier on. Push that through. Cool, that fits great. And I just need to glue this in place. So we'll just start gluing this down and try not to glue the knob in place. So I'm just gonna do one of those for the beginning, and then I can do another one in a second. But again, I want to be real careful that I don't accidentally glue the potentiometer so that you can't turn it anymore, because that would be a problem. Okay, that seemed to work. So let's put one more small little dollop over here. And again, we're not going as crazy as we were with the last one, because we're being really careful, because I can see where the knob is. And if I touch that with the glue, obviously it's going to glue it in place. The glue is so strong that as long as there's you know, a bridge of glue across it, it's gonna work. So I'm not too concerned. What I actually decided to do after thinking about it for a minute is I'm gonna reinforce it with this uh, popsicle stick. So we're gonna put a little bit of glue on the side of this thing, pop the popsicle stick on here, and that will hold everything in place super, super well without me having to worry about potentially um, gluing the potentiometer in place. So popsicle stick it is. Push that down. And that'll splint that up nicely. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna, we're not gonna attach the mono adapter because it's giving me problems. And you know, there's a good chance I'll replace it so we can put the screen on. I'm leaving the screen protector on because I might want to take this off at some point. So I feel like this will help the screen from being messed up. So let's get this all lined up, make sure it looks good on the other side, which yeah, that looks perfect. And put a little bit of glue, keep everybody in place. I'm gonna tack it down real quick first and then make sure everything looks right. And we're gonna let it dry. All right, so I'm gonna actually plug it in and see if the screen lines up more or less with the case that we're gluing it onto. I can always break it off at this point and it'll probably be okay. But if I attach it much better, it's gonna be a real pain to get it off. So let's pop this over and oh, sit this like this. Cause yeah, you can see it's not perfectly attached already. Eh and give it a second and see what it looks like. Oh, that looks so perfect. Um, so I'll go ahead and glue the rest of that down. And once the screen's attached permanently, we'll get back to you. Okay, screen attached. Now we have to plug in, careful, the uh, USB, micro USB cable here. Make sure the orientation's correct. Eh, make sure it's plugged in all the way, which it is. And now we just gotta tuck all this stuff in here. Again, I'm not gonna connect the amp to anything or glue the amp to anything because I may be replacing that. So see if we can carefully convince all these wires to stay inside the box. Aha! Well, now we're clipped together. Look at that. Oh, it's cool. It's beautiful. I did actually remove the screen protector. Um, I decided that, yep, this thing's never coming apart ever again, except to fix the audio. But yeah, 
Now, there's one other thing, because if you've seen The Simpsons, it has a cool little antenna on top. So, let me go ahead, uh, antenna, VCR, or what is this? This is probably a cable box. Yeah, it's definitely a cable box. Oh, it's a VCR, it's got a slot. You can't see because it's black, but we're gonna attach that. However, we've got some cool little filament we're gonna make into the top of the antenna. So let's make this a little bit more cool, not just a straight line. All right, so we added a little bit of zaniness to them, make them a little bit not quite straight lines. So let's see if we can glue the little ball to the uh, to the end of these. This is gonna be fun to do without burning myself, so I'll probably just burn myself. Look for the bottoms. Actually, this is a job for pliers. All right, so just the world's smallest amount of glue right there. Should be plenty, and then just Plop them right on like that, and that should attach itself in just a second. As soon as the glue cools down, I keep saying dry, as glue doesn't dry, it just cools down. Loop, and yeah, attach. Whoops, not a problem. Cool, now we can just attach them to the top part here. So let's see if I can clean this off a little bit. I'm just gonna try to like inject glue into here, being careful because I know this is melting the PLA. Get that in there. And then get this guy over here, Oop, in there. Awesome, and there we go. That looks pretty cool. I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna let it dry. So that leads us with our last step, which is just simply gluing the VHS on top of here. So we'll put a nice little dollop of glue right there. Yeah, get rid of some of the strings and then lower it right down. We're gonna give it a little nuzzle. Oh, perfect. That looks so freaking cool. Now all we gotta do is plug it in. All right, time for the final reveal. And here it is. Super cool, it's the Simpsons TV. I love the antenna on there, it looks really cool. Yeah, the whole project came out really, really cool. Volume knob still works. Although you're not gonna be able to hear it through there, so there's no sense in turning it up. That's what it looks like now. And actually, if I do manual focus, here you go. That's what it looks like. Yeah, you can see that my paint job's a little bit sketchy on there, but all in all, I think it came out great. The case looks really cool um, with the multicolor filament. I would reorient it slightly to make it so the, the color gradients matched, but I mean, all in all, I think this came out really cool. Now again, this has been a project I've wanted to do for so long, so I'm like so actually genuinely psyched to have this thing. I'm gonna have it on my desk playing Simpsons episodes all the time. Now shooting a video like this has been a bit of a challenge for me and I'm doing my best every time I make another one. But if you have any suggestions at all, equipment, camera angles, literally anything at all, let me know down in the comments. But for now, I'm gonna get to putting all the rest of the Simpsons episodes on this guy so I never know what episode's gonna come up next. Thanks a lot for watching. Check it out.